whenever I do presentations about Elogio and the work that we've done, I usually try to start by giving people an example to, to catch their attention. And the example that I traditionally use is that I put a, a comic strip up on the board. Um, and I usually pick one which some of you might be familiar with, which is a, the, any strip essentially from the XKCD series. Now, how many here are familiar with XKCD? Okay, quite a few of you. If you're not, look it up. It's an amusing story. Um, so I put up something that people would find familiar. And I asked them if they know where that image or that picture or that story is from. And in a technical audience, especially if I use XKCD, um, you'd get quite a few hands, like 90% of the audience would, would be able to recognize where it's from. Yes, from the style of it, right? Then I put another sketch this time up on a board, which is just a you know, black and white sketch from someone's sketchbook that I've made in their spare time. And I asked the same question, do you know where this is from? And occasionally you get one or maybe two persons in the audience raising their hands, but most people would have absolutely no clue. And then I flick to the next slide where I also include the attribution of that sketch. And I reveal that in fact that sketch is also part of XKCD. It's XKCD comic number seven, I believe I traditionally use. Um, it was one of the very first comics that were released in the XKCD universe. Um, and then you start seeing how people relate to this image in a different way. It's not just an anonymous sketch, it's something that they can actually connect to, they can associate to it uh, by virtue of it being XKCD. So what this hints at and, and what we learn from this is that the, the meaning of something, the meaning of an image that you see online is there's something else going on. It's not just the pixels, it's not just the bits and pieces that make up that image. And we see this all the time in, in science, in, in Wikipedia, in, in art, the, the need to know where something comes from. Who has made something? Uh, when was it made? Where was it posted? All those bits and pieces of information contribute to the overall meaning of the image that we're looking at. The need to understand the context of something. And, you know, in science, we, we, yes, we do have this. We, we always make references to where we got our, our claims or statements. In Wikipedia, well, you'll probably be banned in various different ways um, if you didn't put a proper reference and citation on your uh, claims. Um, in art, of course, this has a name. The name is provenance, to know where a piece of art has been before and what's happened to it in the past. Now. When I started thinking about this, I was still working with Creative Commons. I was, uh, Stefan said here, the regional coordinator for Creative Commons here in, in Europe and Central Asia. Um, and I started to see the, the problem that people had practically by using Creative Commons material. That a lot of times when you had an image in hand that you wanted to reuse, you had no way of knowing whether that was actually licensed under Creative Commons or not, or whether it was in the public domain, or, or you know, what was the copyright status of that. And even if it was uh, licensed under a Creative Commons license, you had no way of knowing how would you attribute the author if that was not part of the, the information that you received. And I started elaborating an idea that maybe it was possible to connect that information that we need in order to make use and understand a creative work with the work itself. And as a photographer, you'd probably be familiar with something called the EXIF standard, which is a metadata standard for embedding attribution and various other technical details within an image that you distribute. And there's quite a lot of such standards, it turns out, to embed information within digital works as they're being distributed. Now, the unfortunate part that I came to learn quite quickly is that the social media sites that we tend to use, like Facebook and, and Twitter, uh, Instagram and, and so on, they purposefully or by negligence remove all embedded metadata from images that are passed through their networks. The ones that actually retain the most is, is Google. They're the good ones in this. They try to retain it and they try to preserve it even when they change the images themselves before they present it. So connecting it in that way by embedding 
didn't seem to be a feasible solution in the long term because it would tend to get lost at some point in the chain, the moment that someone clicked share. So we started thinking about other ways in which this could be done. And what we came up with is what you see in front of you now, which is a Logio, which is an attempt to build a large-scale provenance catalog. It's quite simple, in fact. It's nothing more glamorous than a database that is specifically tailored to hold information about creative works. It doesn't hold their works themselves, but it's specifically tailored to hold the metadata about any creative work that you can imagine. Images, audio, literature, and so on and so forth. So Elogio is building that repository. And one of the first questions that we asked ourselves is, what would you do if you had that information? Now, it's one thing for us to collect that information. We have millions of sources where we can get that. We can get a lot of metadata from Wikimedia, we can get it from Flickr, we can get it from Europeana, we can get it from a lot of different partners and websites out there. Uh, but what would people use that for? What would you do if you had an ability to ask a system automatically or manually if it knew something about an image that you found online or if it knew something about a PDF that was posted online? Now, some of the things that we could imagine doing with this is solve the original problem that I came to first, to manage attribution. To not have to click back and forth between your browser window and your word processor when you want to reuse a Creative Commons licensed image. You can just take the image, drop it into your word processor, the word processor makes a call to Elogio, figures out that this is actually Creative Commons licensed, it's by this person, I'll put the attribution here automatically. That's something that's quite feasible to do with technology like this. We could set up systems so that Glams could know when their works are being reused online. Paul Keller this morning, he envisioned some kind of ping mechanism, uh, which is a use case that we've also explored in Elogio. Um, essentially, making sure that as people go around looking at works online and as they are being matched against the Elogio catalog, if a work is found somewhere else in the wild, maybe someone has taken a, an, an image from the, the Royal Library here um, and reused it on their blog, and someone visits that blog, then maybe Elogio could be helpful in pinging the Royal Library and saying, hey, you know, someone found your image, it's used on this website over here. Uh, which taken together could mean that any glam would get a lot more information about how their works are being used. Maybe not the very details of it, but they would at least get more than they have today. We could also do license checks. We could ask a user if they're running a LibreOffice word processor, for instance, and they have an Elogio plugin, um, you could set it and say that I am a commercial user. I would like to publish this commercially, whatever I'm writing. And then if I take an image, which is licensed under a Creative Commons non-commercial license, this plugin could just flag that and say, do you really know what you're doing now? Uh, we could also use it to provide some whitelisting um, we're going to hear about out of copyright of the EU after this. Um, but that's another aspect of what could be done with Elogio to whitelist information or images that are actually in the public domain, even if they don't appear to be. Uh, Paul hinted at this this morning as well. And we've discovered that very same problem when we were working on Elogio in this past two years, that you have a lot of big companies, including Getty Images, that have in their repository a lot of public domain material which they claim copyright on. And being able to have a plugin that could check against Elogio to make sure that, well, actually, this is not copyrighted by Getty Images or, or their contributors, is actually in the public domain. That would be immensely useful. And if this is implemented, to the fullest extent, if you start having a persistent connection to Elogio as you work with these creations that you find online as well, then Elogio itself would bring, bring, build up uh, structured information about how different works are related to each other. 
Maybe that you've taken two images, merged them and created a derivative work of both of them. That could all be seen in Elogio. You can make those relations between works or that one work is building on another work. It will change the way we relate to the works and it will allow us to explore our own culture in a different way. So, just going back to what Elogio actually is. Um, I've already hinted at that it's a database. Well, it's a database that is A, specifically tailored to store provenance information. B, it provides an API. It provides an API that anyone can implement in their own software to query for information related to the images that is in the Elogio database. You can query it based on two aspects. You can query it based on an identifier, which is usually the URL where you find something. Um, if Elodio doesn't know anything about that, you could also query it by using what we call a perceptual hash, which is when you do a calculation of the image to come up with a small hash which is identical even if someone has resized that image or changed the format from, from a PNG to a JPEG, for instance. So that could still help you to find and identify the image within Elodio. We've also written two plugins. You can see them here for Chrome and for Firefox. They are quite rudimentary, but they, they serve the purpose quite well. When you have them installed, they sit in your browser, and when you're browsing a web page, or you know, probably one of these lists of the 20 most important historical images that you must see before you die, that sort of thing, uh, which have come up quite a lot lately, um, and you ask our plugin to identify the images on, on that web page, and chances are quite high that at least a few of them will actually match against the Logio. So it can make that match for you, and if you find an image that you like, which is openly licensed and a Logio has some information about it, then you can click the copy button, and then when you click paste in LibreOffice or some other word processor, it copies not only the image but also the attribution. Now, it, Elogio won't match all the images that you find online. I mean, there, there's quite a few billion of them, so that would be impractical and it's not something that we can do today. Um, Elogio can, however, match 23 million of them, which happens to be the exact number of images that are on Wikimedia Commons at the moment. That's the data set that we actually decided on using as our first test case. There's a reason why we're using Wikimedia Commons, and that is that Wikimedia Commons, as Paul again hinted on this morning, is actually one of the best categorized and, and you know, one of the sites that have spent the most time actually exploring the legal status of each particular work that's being uploaded. The metadata, while being slightly unstructured until we get Wikidata, um, is still one of the better metadata repositories that are available. And that includes then Getty Images and everyone which has crap metadata. Um, so, we have 23 million images today. In order to actually be generally useful, we probably need about a half a billion. When we have half a billion images in Elogio, then if you're asking Elogio about a work that is openly licensed, then it would be more likely than not that it will actually be able to tell you what that image is. Creative Commons released a State of the Commons address a few months ago here before Christmas saying that in the world there's about 800 million works licensed under Creative Commons. I probably think that there's more. Uh, but within that is probably about half a billion images. So having that would allow us to make that determination whether something is Creative Commons or not or openly licensed. And moving forward from here, we're not actually facing a technology challenge. Uh, that was what we wanted to explore when we came in to doing Elogio. We wanted to actually see whether this was technically feasible to do, and the answer is yes, it's here. It's available. Um, it's for us at the moment, since we were funded by the Shuttleworth Foundation as a research and development project, um, it's a slight funding issue because our funding ran out in February. So we're now on a slight hiatus um, and working together with Paul and others to, to figure out where this technology go from here. Um, but more than anything, it's a time issue. Because I mentioned that we wanted to scale from 23 million images to about half a billion. Now, that's technically doable. The funding is not massive that's required to do that. But even if we did 100 images per second, we'd still be looking at about 8 million images per day. 
So it'll take quite a few weeks to just process everything and we're not doing anything near 100 images per second, probably doing more close to two or three images per second. So you can imagine that that will take quite a bit of time to scale up. Now, we're not the only ones doing this. Um, I'm, that's but good, good and bad, of course, for Logia. I mean, it means that the awareness of how important metadata and provenance can be is increasing. I saw just two days ago that Microsoft has teamed up with Getty Images to provide services when people are using Bing to search for images. So as you're searching for images on Bing, you'll soon be able to see which of those images are licensed by Getty Images. Now, they have a reason for doing this, of course, which is that Getty Images then wants to sell you those rights. That's the reason why Getty Images is invested in this. And depending on how they implement it, they might get a lot of information about potentially infringing uses as well from that. So there's a slight warning as I'm coming to the end of this presentation as far as it comes to Logio, that there are others doing this in the world. There's a lot of people working on technologies related to this. Unfortunately, some of them do not necessarily have the commons community's interests at heart. They have completely other reasons for doing this. So it's more important than ever that the technology that is powering this is implemented in the open and that we do this together as a community to challenge those other players in the market. And as more and more metadata and information about metadata becomes readily available, then of course the possibilities for how people will use that information would only grow. I mentioned just three potential uses so far. Uh, the total list of different uses that we alone have explored is probably 10 or 20. And as people start using this, you'll probably imagine a lot more uses that you can have from knowing where an image comes from, what license it has. And that, I believe, will open up a whole new revolution in how we actually use openly licensed material and how we relate to openly licensed material that we find online. Thank you.